I've just spent the past week in the Persian Gulf aboard a floating city, the world's largest aircraft carrier, the USS Roosevelt. 27 storeys high, its crew of 5,500, average age just 19, has charge of enough firepower to single-handedly take on virtually any country in the world. It's from this formidable battle station that America has been waging war against the Taliban. Out of the sparkling blue Arabian Sea, it looms. A thousand feet long, 27 storeys high, weighing nearly 100,000 tonnes. But from where I'm sitting, in this C2 transport plane, the deck of the USS Theodore Roosevelt looks small. It looks very small. As we detach from the cable that has rudely snapped us to a halt, another of the Theodore Roosevelt's fighter jets is already taking off. Day 32 and 66 of the Roosevelt's aircraft head out to pound more Afghan targets. It's an awesome sight, made even more awesome when you realise what these aircraft are capable of doing. This is America's formidable war machine at work against the Taliban. State-of-the-art smart bombs taking out the smallest of targets. A tank, a jeep, a machine gun nest, or a single artillery piece. There is simply nothing more substantial left to hit. It does seem, on paper at least, a one-sided war. You've got everything on your side. We gave the Taliban a fair chance to turn bin Laden over and to change their ways, and they didn't accept it. So it On the Roosevelt is Rear Admiral Mark Fitzgerald. He's in charge of the US Navy battle group patrolling the Arabian Sea. Would you have thought by now they might have thrown their hands up? I don't know. I mean, if you look at uh, Saddam, I mean, we've had a, we've, we've had a history of uh, people that just don't understand when it's time to give up, so. <laughs> the Roosevelt is the world's largest aircraft carrier. And for the next six months, it'll be work and home to a crew of five and a half thousand men and women. Keeping so many people not only active but happy for so long means providing sailors on board this ship with just about everything they can get back home. But the Roosevelt can do that. It's huge. To quote a well-worn phrase, it's four and a half acres of sovereign American soil. <laughs> There's everything here. This is America afloat. A weights room, a library, hospital, computer games, post office, supermarket, even midnight aerobic classes. This is a floating city at sea. We have everything a city has. You name it, we've got it from a city jail to, uh, to TV studios, complete industrial facilities, fire and, and, uh, and police departments. Uh, of course, we have an airport and, uh, and all the things uh, uh, a city has. Richard O'Hanlon is the captain of the Roosevelt. The average age of the crew on his ship is just 19. It's probably in the neighborhood of uh, 2,500 teenagers that I have to deal with uh, from day to day. I, I find that that is uh, quite, quite a challenge also. I'm, I'm a dad to, uh, to 2,500 teenagers. Many of them would not be trusted with the family car, yet here they are at war. Exactly right. These, these people, especially if you look at uh, the plane captains that uh, are given an airplane, a, a $35 million airplane. Some of these aircraft are worth up to $65 million, and they are the ones responsible for the uh, for the daily maintenance, the upkeep of the aircraft. Uh, they're the ones that uh, do the final checks to make sure that the aircraft is safe for flight. 
Uh, yet you're right at home, uh, they'd hardly be given the family car. This is the first cruise, at least in my memory, uh, in my career, where we are responding to an attack on the United States by uh, forces of terrorism. It does make our, what we're doing very personal, very special to everybody in the crew. I happen to be from New York, so I, I have a tremendous uh, number of family members that were affected by the, uh, uh, by, by the September 11th attacks. But again, throughout this crew, uh, we have people from all over the nation, and every one of them feel uh, as, as if this is a very personal mission that they're on. Not a single bomb or missile leaves the ship without a word or two for its intended target. That's personal notes to Osama himself and his little friends over there. You know, here, have a little fun with this thing here, you know. Let him eat that. Yeah, take care of them, get them out of our face. It's disgusting what they did. I'd love to be the one to put a bullet in his head. I'd love to, but uh, I'm just being honest. What, what sort of weapons these are, are these? Uh, laser guided bombs. These are GBU 12s, 500 pounders. And uh, they just follow a laser in to the target and it blows up. Pack a punch. That's right, a big punch. Ordnance Chief Dennis Stacy is in charge of arming one of the Roosevelt's eight fighter jet squadrons. Is this a personal war for you? I, I think it is. It, uh, it, it really hit home when, when that happened the uh, September the 11th. And it, it's. It makes you feel like you've got, you're actually accomplishing something to see the jets come back without bombs on them. And do most of your colleagues feel the same way? Yes. I think everyone feels about the same on board here. What about um, when people talk about innocent lives being taken? It's, I mean, 7,000 innocent lives got taken the, uh, in September the World Trade Center in the Pentagon. So it's war, I mean. People are going to get killed. Roosevelt is operating what it calls an inverted day. It means the work of war is done mostly at night. It's spectacular and dangerous choreography. At peak times, planes take off every 20 seconds. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Big picture wise, we are the uh, Ventry launch, four cycle, six hour flight, uh, going north and uh, getting tasking uh, up in the. Below uh, deck, the, uh, another area. squadron is being briefed by their leader, go, Woody. Uh, look over the card for security well. reasons, none of the and pilots some give some their real names. Well, we expect to see some other folks up there doing the same thing we are. As Tonight, we, uh, Woody we and his men will take off uncertain uh, of what they'll be bombing. The, uh, once well. over Afghanistan, U.S. and British special forces on the ground will direct them to their targets. When you have to put your finger on that button, what do you feel? Well, hopefully you feel, uh, you feel uh, relief that you've executed properly, that you've found the proper target, that you've put yourself in a position to, to drop and employ the weapon appropriately. And, uh, and so in that respect, you, uh, uh, there's, no, there's no emotional attachment to that bomb. There's no, there's no happiness or, or dread. Do you ever see um, shots of civilians who have been killed and, and wonder whether you might have done that? Um, we see reporting of, of civilian casualties. Uh, there's very little, when we come back from missions, we're very good at knowing exactly where our weapon went, exactly what target we were assigned to hit, and we know the results of, of our mission. So there's no, there's very little situations in which we do not know uh, the success or failure of our, of our mission. Um, we're taking extraordinary steps to prevent situations like that. I, I dearly hope that's something I won't have to deal with. And, uh, and, and so far, uh, I haven't. Smart weapons are smart to a point. There's only, you can only, you, you can't get ever to get to 100%. You only get to 99%. So you feel very bad when a weapon goes astray. Uh, and unfortunately, it, sometimes they, they do go and hurt innocent people. But I'll tell you that we try very hard. And this is, this war, 
you know, we, we've always tried to avoid collateral damage, but this war in particular, part of our strategy is to win the hearts and mind of, of the Afghan people and get, and get them also to rise up against the Taliban. So it's very important to us not to have collateral damage. And we try very hard not to have that happen. Woody's squadron takes off for what will be a six-hour mission. Their task tonight is to prepare the way for the start of the Northern Alliance ground assault against the Taliban. This is war American style. High tech and so far, low risk. Inspector approach time, 3 1, approach time, 17. In the radar room, the Roosevelt's crew watch in isolation as their jets crowd the skies of Afghanistan. I think this is actually a, a fight that the world needs to be involved in. This is a world struggle here against terrorism. How do you feel about those people in the coalition who don't think we should be at war? What would you say to them? I would say that uh, there are probably 6,000 lives that were terminated early uh, that would disagree with them. And 6,000 family members uh, that would also disagree with them. Woody's squadron appears in the early morning sky. We're given no details, but we're told the mission was a success. So you, uh, what, relax, put your feet up? Relax, I could go for Foster's right now, but I don't think I'm going to find any on board. And uh, uh, I will uh, go to bed here uh, at noon and uh, wake up at 9, 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, working on the uh, work in the night cycle. Do it all again. Do it all again tomorrow. Is it a war you can win, though? Uh, you'll never know unless you try. Losing is not an option. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.